Welcome back. We are continuing the restoration of our 8-bit ASR33 teletype. In the previous episode, we wrangled with the flimsy keyboard, had a brief episode of black and white titus, cussed about why such simple keyboard wiring could be so obtuse, mastered the fine art of contact bending, and eventually got it to work again. But the printer section took advantage of the downtime to develop yet another malady. So I'm doing an A instead of doing an exclamation point here. Shift. Definitely an A. So I am wrong in my height decoding which, if I am not mistaken, is bit 5 and 7 that do the height. The ASR33 uses rotation and height control of the typing head to choose one of 64 characters on its cylinder. It has 4 positions in height, 8 clockwise and 8 counterclockwise rotations. It is probably inspired by the rotation and tilt mechanism of the IBM Selectric 1, which was introduced several years earlier. But it is a completely different mechanism, far less precise, but also much simpler. Once rotated into position, the poor typing head gets crudely whacked from behind by a rubber hammer to print the character on paper. Let's try to see if I can get any of the top row characters. Ampersand, percent, dollar, pounds. Ampersand, shift, eight. Ampersand, percent, dollar. These are hard to find. Pounds. And instead of getting ampersand, percent, dollar, pounds. I think I got F E D C. Well, I got at E D C. None of the top row. This is the map of the print cylinder, or as they call it, the type wheel. It looks like I can't print any of the top row of characters. It also looks like I'm having rotation direction errors, sometimes printing the clockwise character instead of its counterclockwise equivalent. The head rise and rotation is controlled by a fascinating mechanism hidden in the print carriage. The carriage itself slides over the code bars that line the bottom of the machine. The 9 code bars corresponding to the 8 ASCII bits plus one additional bar for the print suppression mechanisms are connected to the print head by sensing sliders. Bits 1 to 3 control the amount of rotation, bit 4 the direction of rotation, Bit 5 and 7, the head rise. Bit 6 and 8 are ignored. And finally, the first code bar does print suppression. So the hieroglyphics tell me the high control is those three little levers here. Uh, that's low, middle, high. Uh, and nothing, which is even higher. And I can see there is definitely something wrong with the low one, which is of interest to me. Yeah, you see it. There you go. And that that lever right here, that little guy, is not clearing. It should be completely out or completely in, and it's in the middle. And I know what the problem is. It's because it's sluggishness. If I try to move that lever, see, it's not coming back. It's super sluggish. It's just a single point boiling problem. The good news, bad news things, I actually have to remove the head. That's the bad news. The good news is that you'll see how it works. This is my trusty 9104B oil. So, the oil did its miracle. It's not slug sluggish anymore. Well, a little bit. I'll have to oil some more, but at least it moves and I can do my explanation of how it works. Those three bars are controlled by those two bits, bits 5 and 7, which is why they are next to each other. So if I move this one, it moves the bar, the small bar at the back, you don't really see it. It's this small one. It's moved by this bit. 
the medium one is moved by the first bit and the middle one, the one that was sluggish, is moved, it's an end, it's a mechanical end, is moved by either of the two. So that gives you a 4-bit decoder. So, if I can demonstrate where you can see the head. This is no bit selected, so it's the lowest ele elevation. This is, and that would be this one, the first position. It stops on that one. This is this, the second position. And if I push the two, it can go all the way up. So you have done a two bits to four mechanical position and the multiplexer. Uh, but the rotation control is even more amazing and I, I, I need to go into that anyhow because I have a problem with it. It's also sluggish. The amount of rotation is controlled by these three bits for eight different positions. Another bit next to it controls the direction of rotation, bringing the total to 16 positions. The head is rotated by the differential movement of two gear racks that pass through holes in a set of three plates. This is done by two bits moving slides 2 and 3, and the common slide is a mechanical end of the other two slides, using the same trick as the vertical position decoder to make a 2-bit to 4 position decoder. So for example, if I push on the two bits, I can go all the way through. But if I release bit 2, I only go through the two first plates, as the third plate is down and stopping the rack. Bit 1 controls the first shift plate and is harder to demonstrate. That plate does not have any holes. Instead it has shoulders and allows the whole rack assembly to move half a position forward when it is up. This is used to select odd or even rows and effectively double the number of attainable positions to 8. Watch as I push the first plate up and the whole assembly slides forward. So we are now up to 8 positions. To get to 16 positions with our fourth bit, we need one more mechanical trick, changing the direction of rotation. This is accomplished by a rotary arm drive which has two tabs, one extending to the left and another one on the other side, slightly lower that you can't see here, located on the right of the arm. The tab engages the left or the right rack, depending on the arm position, which will determine which rack gets pulled when the drive bale moves rearward. Watch as I pull the drive bale manually. Here is one direction, and here is the other one. And this, my friend, is how to do a 6-bit into 64 positions mechanical decoder. If you'd asked me how to do it, I would have come up very dry. So I've put my head back after I oiled it, and so now I should have ones and shift ones at work. Yeah, so I'm back into business. H is one side of rotation, T is the other side. Let's see if we can get all the top pro now. And percent, percent dollar, pound, quote, and exclamation point. Yeah, I have them all. I'm all good. I repaired it by strategic oiling. I was just about to make a demo, and now this happened. Return, and then the ratchet doesn't reset, and that's because there's a little tongue down here that broke and pushes on the ratchet mechanism here and this little protrusion and that's what's left of it it broke so then now I have to take the carriage out and replace the parts I have to make a new one basically Whoa. 
Something like that. So I have an uh, unreliable, unreliable carriage return. But we're pretty darn close.